May I, am I permitted to transfer this idea of productivity to Mr. Ambassador? Okay. Yeah. And uh, ask you, um, is, is this one of the main benefits you see in this issue of um, diversity, that uh, social systems, political systems, societies could be more productive if they accept it, if they use it? Well, I think cultural diversity is, is definitely an asset. Uh, it has the potential to, to enrich a society First, economically, it's definitely um, an economic asset. But there's another, another thing, and this is stability. Um, diverse societies, more open societies, uh, more inclusive societies tend to be more stable. Uh, much more stable than, than authoritarian societies who, um, who try to maintain enforced uniformity. Look, for example, at, at the Arab Spring. Um, the um, regimes uh, we thought were stable, of Ben Ali, of Mubarak, were swept away within a few days only. Um, I, I'm just on the way to find perhaps some good example. Do you see any countries where you would say they, uh, they've, um, they benefited of this idea of being a rainbow nation? Well, so success stories, perhaps Mexico, I don't know, but what is... Your opinion. Well, I, I leave the case of Mexico to you, but um, uh, I think Indonesia is a perfect case. Mm. And uh, if I talk to um, my Arab friends, uh, what I do a lot in these, these days, I, I tell them, don't, don't look to Europe too much, don't look to Turkey too much, mm. but also look to countries as, as Indonesia. And Indonesia has, has a tradition of, of, of being an inclusive, of being... Um, 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 a society uh, which tries to to um, to uh, embrace all ethnic groups, all religious groups, all different language groups, and uh, the concept of Pansaria is is I think uh, is is uh, something which was in event invented many years ago, and it's now a, a big asset in the transformation process towards democracy. Mr. Ambassador, you are, are European. Is Europe, has Europe already done its homework to this regard? Well, look at uh, our domestic policy. We um, invented uh, a couple of years ago the German Islam Conference. And it's not just something for, for foreign policy, it's also something for dom domestic policy. Uh, because integration in these times of, uh, of, of migration is a very big challenge for all of us. And uh, to integrate uh, um, the, uh, uh, the people of Muslim faith into the German society is a huge challenge, a huge, ta huge task. But I think uh, we, have, uh, we have come quite, uh, quite a long way already, but no doubt there's still a lot to do. It's an interesting bridge. I really want to raise the interest for Mexico and also the policy you do there in, in the country to bridge perhaps the gap between cultures. I think the name Mexico came from Aztec language and today only 1.2% of people are understanding and speaking this uh, dialect. So is Mexico a success story in, let's say, conserving cultural um, diversity and heritage? Let me give you no. It is open. Let me give you two examples. Myself. Yeah, <laughs> a good example. <laughs> Myself. I'm, uh, well, the result of uh, this dialogue, half German, half Mexican. And the German government for many years has done, uh, I think, a very good job in giving uh, or promoting the German culture outside Germany. There you have the Goethe Institute or the German schools, which, which I attended well, for 15 years. Uh, and uh, by saying so is that, yes, there, this is not new. And this began maybe after the Second World War, uh, when many people had to migrate to other, to other uh, countries. That was uh, what my family did. Um, but let's not stay only by, in, in terms of what, what my example is, one out of four Mexicans live in the United States. And if I could ask Barack Obama if this is important, I'm almost sure he would say yes, because the Latino vote or the Mexican vote could change the elections in the US. 
So what do Mexicans do in, in, in the US? Work, they work, and they work a hell, and they work a lot. And, do th and they do things that many, many Americans don't like to do in agriculture and some other jobs, but the, the working force of Mexicans in the US is very important. So, there's a cultural di diversity. Yes, there, there's a cultural diversity. There's, uh, you need to align this cultural uh, uh, diversity. Yes, of course, you, you, you have and you, you need to do that. And Mexico has done pretty well in these terms. We have, uh, there's, um, there's a, a very important, or there are very important policies regarding Mexicans living abroad. We at the, at the educational TV system in Mexico have a TV channel which brings education to uh, Mexicans living uh, in the US not only education, uh, it's high school education, for instance, and junior high school education, but Spanish too. We don't, uh, we don't want to forget our, our roots and, and the language is very important. So this is uh, how, how important, for instance, TV is, television is. You can, uh, you can just turn on uh, the TV and have a Spanish lesson, or you can have, uh, you can have, uh, uh, recipes in the TV, and you can have maybe a program regarding uh, the Aztecs, or how Tenochtitlan uh, used to be, or how Mexico is now, uh, now uh, being seen. Mexico is not only drugs and narco uh, narco-traffic. <laughs> Mexico is, it, it's, it's very different, and don't, uh, the media doesn't even, doesn't always say the right things and the right and the truth. I think we have a lot of media professionals here. I know that, here, I know that. Uh, so but I, 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 this aspect you mentioned is quite interesting, that we uh, should put cultural diversity as image, as a person, when it comes to casting of, of uh, for example, soaps in the evening. Um, many migrant groups in Germany are criticizing that our television um, broadcasts are not mixed in a um, sense which is near to reality. And I, I think media is playing a key role, isn't it? I think media, media is playing a key uh, role and it will play a key role in the coming years. And the thing is how to use media how we can use media to better get this well done how, and to understand the diversity and, and the different cultures and how we can align and, and play the same song together. Mm -hmm. This is what media has to do. Yes, and also to preserve the, the, whole, um, yeah, the whole range of cultures um, we, we have in our societies. Um, there is a danger that uh, is also described in literature and also by the UNESCO sometimes that Globalization could lead to a dominance of Western culture, perhaps enhancing stereotypes against Muslims or against um, developing regions. Um, do Indonesians perceive this risk? Do they see it? Do, is it discussed in public opinion that there is the risk that English, American, European way of life could be very dominant? in some 10 or five years? As I have mentioned before, it's not the culture, it's the values which we are concerned of. I'll give you an example. You, the ambassador has told about the Arab Spring, what happened in um, Cairo. I was there in May for a discussion with them on the request of the United <coughs> Nations. They are not cultural defensive, they are all Arabs. They speak the same language. They behave almost the same. The problem is justice, democratic values. You see? And it has something to do with productivity. The problem is what they need is work for the people. The problem is they need equity distribution of income, chances. It's not a cultural problem. If we look at Indonesia, we are culturally diversified. 
somebody from Sumatra, Aceh, and somebody from Papua, they look different. Not the same. They speak a different language. But since heaven, we are still united. We can control. I was the man who has to do that at that time. Because of that, I was very aware of the values of the media. We all know some 260, 63, 64 years ago, it was Montesquieu who made the Trias Politica. You know, the forces of three forces, that is justice at the other, should not be controlled by one. The executive, legislative, um justice forces. I was facing that. If it's controlled by one, you get problems. But 264 years afterwards, I find out it is the people's power which is being reflected by demonstration, by ref reflected by the free press. And they have to play a role. And they are the four <coughs> forces. And I was recognizing that, that it is the four forces, not Mont Montesquieu, plus what? Not from a tria to cadro politica. And you can see that in the Arab Spring, it was triggered by what? Social network, information, etc., etc. You see, I think we have to look not only as, uh, of course, we have to aware about the structure of culture, religion, etc. But we should be able to think further what is behind that. And that, I think, it is a social justice in this case. But Mr. Abibi, coming, coming back to this idea, do you fear that some of your cultures in, the, in Indonesia will vanish due to the fact that we have an overall English communication no, no. on the web, for example? No, you know. That is one, this is the only reason why I have done this. I give suddenly to all the provinces uh, their independence, not independence as a state, independence to develop their own culture. Because I have to increase the resilience of the culture. You have to increase. But not by speaking, but by doing. Mm. And in this case, because what? If I could increase the resilience of the culture, they could be uh, what you call immune against everything, and they could increase the productivity because resilience of culture and, resil and compatible with religion and the mechanism of science and technology increase their productivity. And if they could increase their productivity, they it could increase their competitiveness in making product coming with excellent product in the local market, domestic, whatever. I would like to... And it has something to do with work, with man hours, with uh, what you call the justice and equity distribution of income, wealth, and so on. I would like to build a bridge from you to Mrs. Mer Merkel to your side, uh, but, but keep the mere mic because the first <laughs> question goes uh, again to you. Okay. In very short uh, answer, mm. what are your expectations concerning multi multilateral organizations like the UN, like UNESCO, in how far this issue of um, cultural diversity is more an issue of domestic policy or could the multilateral approaches and institutions really contribute? What should they do? The multilateral institution or organization like the United States or UNESCO and whatever must be treated as catalyst. But the decision maker must be in the country. You know, and the and the decision maker must take care that the quadro politica, where the number four is media, must not be controlled by one group or whatever. And who could help them? 
that is the multilateral organization we have our representative also in the UNESCO. Mm, you have? Mm. And that is, we could not say, oh, then mm. if something happened with our country, then to blame the UNESCO. No. Mm. We should talk with the UNESCO and the United States how to do together better. Is this also the self-understanding of the UNESCO? Well, coming back to what you said, what matters is really facts and figures, and it, it's practical action, and UNESCO has started monitoring systematically over the last five to seven years what is really happening also in the field of cultural products and what are the ideas which are circulating. And there, of course, we cannot be satisfied at all with the picture we see. Uh, because we live in a world market where films travel, music travels, book travels, and you see the big producers is the same group of seven, eight countries, including Germany, US, huh? UK, maybe China in some fields, but the many voices around the globe are not there. So there are 130 countries who don't have the capacity to produce a feature film, for instance. So you cannot stay satisfied, and UNESCO has done a marvelous job empowered by its member states to monitor this data, and then it becomes interesting. What can we do together? Uh, how to foster co-production? How to make sure that you have the variety of languages spoken in a country in your media programs, and not be pushed through trade negotiations hmm, to reduce the number of your own content. So this is where the real hot issues are today. And I think we have the glass is half empty and half full. Mm. Because uh, in book production or in cinema, we do have many new possibilities because of digitized production. Mm? But you also need, and um, as uh, Mr. President said, you need an empowering framework on the national level. Eh? You need a government who takes that seriously, who builds up the skills, who builds up the professional learning opportunities uh, to make that happen. And then UNESCO can be a very good partner, but it's walking on two legs, it's not either or.